I've received so many premium 500 package spams that the phrase prompting engineering usually makes me cringe. Prompting is a skill integrated into data science, software development, machine learning, and other jobs. It's important, but oftenly overlooked. In this video, I'll show you factual and measurable ways to refine your prompts and get better results. If you have a persistent task, you can expect better, consistent, and cheaper responses by following these seven simple tips. First tip is reduce your prompt's length. You can find this paper on Archive, which explains the impact of input length on LLM reasoning performance. This chart shows that AI performance decreases with longer inputs. We often use descriptive language leading to prompts like this one, which could be simplified to create an objective and concise summary of the following document, including all main topics. Avoid links and HTML tags. At 3,000 tokens, this can reach over 20% performance increase by eliminating unnecessary text. And smaller input tokens imply in reduced costs. Next is role prompting. This method alters the tone, style, and content of a model's response by instructing it to act as a professional, a character, or an entity. For example, instead of writing, you should be professional, act like you know numbers in all investment terms, just say, act as a financial analyst. The third tip is chain of thought. The dotted line from the first tips chart shows how well an AI performed with chain of thought. This isn't about explaining every step to the LLM, which can actually worsen its performance. Instead, simply induce the AI to think step by step. For example, a group of five friends went to a restaurant. They ordered three pizzas at $15 each and two salads at $18 each. If they split the bill evenly, how much does each person pay? Just by adding the phrase, let's think step-by-step step, would significantly improve this prompt, especially for less capable models. The Mistral 7B model, for example, would roughly go from 0.75 accuracy to nearly 0.9 just by adding chain of thought. Fourth, use better models. This is the most effective way to improve results. It's obvious, but people often expect similar performance from local LLMs as they would from models like Claude 3.7 Solid. When I create an AI agent, I start with the best model for the job. If it understands the tools and all works well, I then downgrade to a cheaper model while adjusting the prompt. This really helps to isolate whether the issues come from tool configuration, prompting, or simply the context. Fifth, few shot learning. Based on the research, language models are few shot learners, performance improves with more parameters and few shot examples. Providing examples of desired behavior enhances accuracy. However, this can contradict with tip number one. If examples are random, use examples only when necessary, especially for a complex task where instructions might be ambiguous. Sixth is structured outputs. This is very useful for getting data back in a predictable format. Example, instead of this person is wearing a black hat, rounded glasses, a white shirt, blue pants, and boots, you could have requested each one of these as give me a JSON back with what he's wearing in the head, what he has on his body, and from there on. This is more reliable and allows you to define field expectations, improving response quality. Ideally, you should just use this when structured data is crucial. Avoid using it in conversational agents. Finally, the seventh tip is for you to iterate. Getting an LLM to perform as needed, especially for AI agents, involves aiming for 95 to 99% accuracy. For critical applications like medical diagnosis, legal advice, or finance, aim higher, but never expect 100%. LLMs are probabilistic. They are inherently prone to errors. They choose the most predictable next word based on learned patterns, which means there is always an element of chance. Therefore, quantifying LLM performance for a given task, even with manual human evaluation, is necessary and can improve accuracy. So just to expand more on that seventh tip, let's go over to Grok and you'll see that I had this prompt right here and then I refined it to this prompt right here. And how I would test this, despite like this is a very short prompt, you wouldn't notice the difference. Like it's not a prompt for you to be testing this, but I wanted to show you guys how I would like actually test this uh, human wise and also using an LLM. So human wise, I would just go through each one of these results, uh, regenerate them about five to 10 times, and then just note them down, like manually try to give them a grade. So from zero to 100, how well did this perform? I would go through each one of them and actually read through this and see like what was the better result. 
And that way I can refine the prompt to like get to exactly what I want. In this other prompt, I did the same. I made it generate five examples. And what I would do here is just get the average. But as I said, like this, this is a minor prompt. This is really small and it really doesn't make a lot of difference. The other way you can test the results of your prompts is just using an LLM like I'm doing right here. I'll send you some text generated by an LLM. The main focus is for it to achieve the following instructions because I can't just send the, like a vague text. It needs to have some context to base its grading off of. So that's what I give it. And then I send each one of the texts. All it does is send over, okay, text one has a grade of 92, then text two has a grade of 88. And then I just continue on until I have an actual average value. Now you could be wondering what was the tool I used previously. And it's this one where it's, well, it's actually a work in progress, but you can already use it. What it does is basically take a prompt like this one where I asked, this is a script of my entire YouTube video. Please create an entire description. When we're writing down a prompt, especially when we're using an AI assistant like Grok, we don't think of it that much. Like we don't, we're not thinking like, how can I make this more concise? So what I thought is, well, let me make a project. Like let me make a tool for myself where it just does that for me. So if I click on refine prompt, that's what it aims to do. It eliminates everything that is unnecessary, ambiguous. And additionally, it covers the few shot features. So it provides places inside of the prompt where I could add a example and then the LLM will better understand what I want. So if I click accept, you'll see that the prompt is much shorter. And I didn't show you guys that. Let me generate that once again, refine prompt. Down here, what I'm aiming to do, and for shorter prompts, this, this is kind of useless, but this narrowed it down from 98 tokens to 90. You can barely like, really see a difference in that. Uh, but for larger prompts, so if I do something like, let's go over to Gemini, I made it produce an overly extensive and descriptive prompt, which has a lot of useless things. If we get absolutely everything and send over to the refiner, it should narrow it down to just about a sentence or such. Let's see. So yeah, it removed most of it. So down here, you'll find that originally we had 1,083 tokens that came down to 390 tokens, which was a 64% difference. And at some point here, yeah, accuracy improvement, we got an accuracy improvement of 5%. Uh, I also wanted to add something related to cost. So if I wanted to output tokens as well. And the amount of tokens would be the same as like the size of the prompt, let's say. So I'd select equals prompt. And then this just calculates how much I would save monthly if I were using GPT 3.5 Turbo. If I've selected Claude 3.7, you'll see that this price goes all the way up to 118. That based on 300 daily uses. Currently, when you log in with Google, you'll be presented with this screen at which you could just hit create a project then create new, test, create project, and then place in your prompt over here and hit refine prompt. That's you can use up to 15 tokens, but if you need more, just let me know. Feel free to test out theaiforger.com. If you have any feedback, please let me know inside of the AI Forge community. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.